Mike Lawrence, lead pastor at Faith Community Church, and this is another social cue. Can I trust God to be good? This is a real important question to many people, and there's two sides to the question. One side is kind of a morality idea. Will God always do the right thing? And what is the right thing? The other side is, can I trust God to do what's beneficial for me? And what's good for me? I want to look at that side for a moment. This was real important to me too in my development because I've come through a lot of suffering in my life. I mean, besides a tremendous amount of physical ailments that I've had to manage from asthma to aspergillus to cancer, I also experienced the loss of my dad, my grandmother, and my mom all before I turned 18. I had to really wrestle with where's the loving God in the midst of all this. So I got involved in this book that was just so helpful called Trusting God by Jerry Bridges. And I wrestled through these three attributes of God and how they applied to my life. One is that God needs to be powerful. Two, that he needs to be compassionate. And three, that he needs to be wise in order for him to do what's good for me. And I could trust him because let's think about it. If God is all powerful, which the scripture seemed to talk about and was an experience in my life and the answer to prayer. I mean, only a powerful God could answer prayers. If he wasn't compassionate or wise, that's kind of like a dictator, using all their power to do what they think is best, regardless of the impact on their people, which is often harmful, right? Well, I thought about that he needs to be compassionate as well, but a compassionate God who could direct the power of God, if he doesn't have power and wisdom, he's like a grandfather. And I am a grandfather, right? I look at my, my grandson when he suffers, it's like, gosh, I want to do something to help him, but I'm powerless to do it. And I don't always know what the right thing is. So my love is helpful, but I need to be powerful and wise to do something beneficial for him. Then there was the idea of wisdom, because if God is all powerful and he's all loving, he needs to know what is the best thing to do in this situation, not just for me, but for others around me and for his plan in general. I need to know that he thinks that way, but a God who is wise, who is not powerful, and who is not compassionate, he's like that disengaged surgeon who looks at you like a problem, a puzzle he wants to solve, but you don't always know that he's gonna solve the problem correctly. It was bringing these three attributes of God together. The power of God that I saw in answering prayer, the compassion of God that I experienced in moments of deep distress where I felt his love wash over me, and the wisdom of God that I began to see in the Bible that was unfolding, a plan of God that was greater than me, that helped me trust God. Because here's the thing about trusting God. I walk into the situation and I just want the pain to stop. But is that always what's best? I had a situation with a daughter once when she was very young and we didn't know what was wrong in her life and she had to have a spinal tap. I had to send her into a situation where I wasn't there. It was painful and scary to her, but she needed to have the procedure in order for us to help her. She didn't understand that. She had to trust me that I was loving enough, wise enough and powerful enough to do what was good for her in that moment. And I looked at God like that. I don't always understand my suffering. But what I clearly see out of the Bible through the lives and history of people and the church and through my own personal experiences that when I surrender to God in a difficult, painful moment, I can see him make me into a better person. And I can actually see him do good through my life into the lives of other people. It happened when I was first a youth pastor. All the death that I experienced, when I came on board as a youth pastor, it blew my mind how many teenagers lost a parent to death. God took my pain and suffering and he retooled it into a way that helped the teenagers in my ministry that were suffering. It's been something I've been able to bring to my ministry ever since. Big topic, right? Which needs more conversation. So if this video was helpful, like it. If you find these questions helpful, subscribe to our channel. But honestly, you need to process this in a community and we have groups that will help you do this. So go to our website. We have a wonderful care ministry. If you're hurting and you need help, we're there for you.